Okay everyone and welcome back to FKW. Today we're going to be concentrating on the third part of this series. The rough cutting is here, rough sanding, and the final rough finish prior to getting into your actual finished work. If you remember yesterday when we left off, I had every epoxy stick numbered. And here are your knives. Here's 10, 9, 8, and 7 in different stages of rough. The reason I do this is so that I can tell how this epoxy is set up on each knife. Now I know that that knife is going to have no issues epoxy wise. That's done. This knife will have no issues epoxy wise. That's done. Now those can be discarded. That's the only reason why I keep these is to make sure that the adhesion will work perfectly to wood. Okay, so here we are at this point. Knife's out of the vise. We're going to take our clamps off. And they're going to stick a little bit. Don't worry about that. That's why we use the tape. Because like I said earlier, I'm not worried too much about the marring on the wood at this point because it's going to get to a lot thinner state. Again, now it's just a matter of removing the painter's tape. And now you'll see why I use painter's tape. A typical tape would adhere a lot harder to that epoxy. This comes off generally pretty easy. I spoke too soon. And don't worry about the little bits that are stuck back on here because you're going to be sanding all that off. That's pretty much as far as we have to go with this right now. Because this, in the rough stage, prior to cutting, will eventually be this in the rough stage of the rough finish sand. So you'll see that none of this really matters. Let's go over here to the vise. Put your blade down in. As a matter of fact, at this point, you can just pull off all the snot that's left over from the epoxy, which is a good sign. Seeing how much ooze down in here, you know that you applied plenty. Okay, now that that's in the vise, you'll see that the pins are extruding from the wood scales at this point and this point. We're going to eliminate that problem. Good old sawzall. They're still very rough and sharp, be careful. But you'll notice it's a lot more flush and it's going to be easier to work with at this time. First thing I'm going to do, take this knife, put it back into the vise this way. Now, a lot of people at this point, they'll just sit here and sand the rest of this out. It's just a lot of sanding, a lot of belts, and to me, not worth it. So what I will do, move this table out of the way, is I'm going to take my sawzall. I'm going to follow the spline of the knife. What I'm trying to do here is to eliminate as much excess wood as possible so when I get to sanding, I'm not just standing there all day with a sander. What you'll see now is that I'm close. I still have epoxy resin all in here. I still have a good sixteenth of an inch gap in, in this area here. But I'm going to keep cutting and cutting and trimming until I get to a point till I want to get to the sander. 
once I'm done with this, your knife will now look like so. That's a rough cut. Now you can see, there's still a gap in here. And a lot of work has to be done. It's just chopped up, but it's giving you the basic idea of what's going on. So then we're going to take this now. I'll bring this out to my sander at, at 120 grit is what I'm going to use. And I'll fire this up, let it get the full speed. And then I'll show you what I do with the bread first, or the things that are still coming through. What I'm basically doing at this point is taking these down, these scales, to a point where I'm starting to get a better outline, which would be the next knife that's in here. Here's one that's been roughly done. You'll still see how meaty the scales are. A little bit wide for a hand. What I'm gonna do at this point is I'd go back out to my 120 grit on that belt I was just using on the same machine and I'd start taking the sides down so I found it a more comfortable fit. Depending on whether it's a woman or a man or the size of their hands, when somebody orders something, I need to have an idea of their hand size. So all I need is a spread from here to here. From point A to point B, thumb to finger. And then I'll, that'll give me a better idea of where this needs to be. Now you'll notice there's a notch in here. I haven't done anything with this yet. Typically I won't even touch this until I've got this approximately where I want it to be width-wise. At that point, after more sanding and sanding, still in a rough stage, not even close to being a finished knife, I've got it now, you see the difference? Let's see here. How much more wood came off of that knife in order to get it from this point, from this point here to this point here. Then I'll take my drum wheel I'll go back over here, still in a coarse sanding. This one here is a 60 grit. And then I'll gently keep working this area in. Once I've got it pretty much down to the metal in here, I will lightly 
feather out, the feather down here to give it a more rounded edge. Because once you get this back into a belt sander, it's going to be very difficult to get that contoured edge on this outside piece of the scale. Because the, the uh, belts are two inches thick, and that's just going to make that a nightmare for you. So you're better off just buying a kit, get the different drum sanders, put them in your drill, and gently massage them. So once you get to this point, you'll be able to see what's going on. It's gently rounded here, gently rounded here. But again, it's still coarse because it's not a final sand. That's a 60 grit. This is all done in 120 grit right now. These will be finished out in 240 grit. And once the 240 grit is done and these edges are rounded off because this is still no bevel, once that's all rounded off, and this little crease line is taken out, and this little crease line is taken out with the 240, then we'll move on. But that's another video. We will take care of that tomorrow in a final sanding video. And we'll be good to go at that point. If, there's, if, if you all want to know why am I taking my time doing videos the way I'm doing them so that you understand them better. It's easier to digest something when it's done step by step than putting or producing a 40 minute to an hour video and completing an eye at one time. It's a lot harder to see it. By, by doing it in segments, I just, for me, it's a lot easier for you, I believe, to understand and to go through the step process. You can rewind, you know, if you're only dealing with a seven minute video, you can go back a couple minutes to see, all right, what did I forget, what did I miss? Also, a lot of these other companies, they'll put out a one hour video and take you from blade through handles, scales, remember? Because they don't want you to know how to do it. I'm showing you how to do it, all right? I will see you on the next upload. We'll get into the finish work. These knives will be ready to go for finish sanding, and we'll be there then. All right, you have a blessed day, and I'll talk to you later. See you in the next upload.